I think you should find someone else to fight. But I can't, Amanda. You're next on the list. Look, see? The numbers are perfectly clear. You know, I've had men come after me because they love me, and men come after me because they hate me. But I've never had anyone come after me because I'm a blip on their flowchart. Look, it's also black and white. If I move on to the next immortal, it screws up my calculations. You can see that, can't you? How did you ever function before computers? Abacus. But the results were the same. There is reason and order to everything in my life. It is essential. I like things neat. Did anyone ever tell you you have the loveliest skin? Ow. You are one sick puppy. Yes, I've been called that before. There was a lovely man, Artemis Lowell. Never knew him. Shame. Right after my first death, he took me in, showed me how to fight, helped me make order out of chaos. He was like a father to me. And still, he never quite understood why his time had come. You killed him. The risk-reward ratio made it viable. He never even saw it coming. this like real men on the courts welcome to the highlander <laughs> rewatch podcast the podcast for each and every week we talk about another facet of the highlander universe i'm one of your rewatchers i'm keith this is kyle is that a basketball thing are we getting dunked on is that what's going on here i guess so i was gonna ask you because you're the lawyer and you must say this a lot right you're like let's settle this in the court or do you in, uh, i always say in the courts in the courts <laughs> uh yes i threaten it often Interesting, interesting. I'm glad that phrase gets used in your profession. Uh, very good. <laughs> so we're back. Uh, we had a little, what, we were off for two weeks, I guess, or whatever. Uh, yeah. Bummer, but, you know, whatever. It's a free show, so here we are. Say, it's, a free, it's, a free, it's a free podcast, so That's enjoy right. it. And we warned, we warned you all. Everyone had their fair warning on our first episode that we might need a, a week or so off. Uh, so we had some, like, work stuff pop up, some personal stuff, but some very exciting. Uh, we have a new honorary, honorary rewatcher, right, Kyle? We do. Oh, her Let's name hear is all Phoebe. about it. Her name is Phoebe. She's an angel. She's an adorable little puppy mm -hmm. that we were told was going to be some kind of short nosed dog mix. Bullshit. Totally just a baby pit bull. This dog is going to be huge. Oh. Uh, we got a little catfished in this respect by the rescue, but we get it. People don't want to adopt bigger dogs. So, like, I, I think we were. I mean, you didn't, and now you did. <laughs> yeah, I think we were subject to some aggressive marketing, but it's okay because this dog is just the best. Like, we're obsessed with her. So, anyway, uh, she's great. Would Do you, you wanna... like to meet her? You want to meet her? We'd all love to meet this dog. So, I'm going to, we're going to cut and we're going to get an intro to this, this, this dog, this exciting content. Cause <laughs> this dog. That's right. Cause we have to delay talking about this episode as long as we can, right, Kyle? As long as humanly possible. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yes. Look at this dog. Well, uh oh. <laughs> and, and the other dog wants to join too. Ugh, oh, but no. this, is, this is Phoebe. Oh, so, and so Dash. Phoebe and Dash. Is there a middle name, I believe? I saw. Yes, yeah, it's Phoebe Ophelia. Ophelia was the name that the rescue gave her. Oh, and, I see. Uh, we were rather taken with it, but it's not a great first name for a dog. You can't really come up with good nicknames for it. Like oh. Ophi, Ophi, like what? What do you do? Ophi, I got us. Yeah, like that's that's, that's what Hamlet kind of... called her, didn't he? I think Ophi, yeah, Ophi. Yeah. That's oh, why yeah. she. Also, that's why she she, she she offed herself. I think she was like, "You got to stop calling me that." Yeah, stop calling me Ophi, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, so obviously we don't want to name her after someone who came to a famously bad end. Uh huh. <laughs> but uh, okay, well anyway, that's she... that's it. How about Phoebe? Phoebe. Well, she's got like a real Phoebe energy, the way she runs around. Uh, it's got like some ancient Greek connections. It's got some friends connections. Uh, that's what I was going to ask you about. Uh, is it friends? Is it Phoebe Cates? Is it uh, <laughs> Phoebe Bridgers, maybe? <laughs> the way she runs does look like Phoebe from Friends. Like just, okay. just like a full body, like, ah! um, But anyway, she's the best. You probably can't see it, but she has uh, different colors in her eyes as well. 
uh, ah. that are that are very uh, fetching. She's a good girl, and she's Fantastic. very smart. She's she's kind of already figured out how to ring the bell to go outside. So oh, I figured that one out a long time ago. Yeah, <laughs> good job. Not that smart, you're huh, smart. dog? You're you're smarter than this dog. What um, other smart things can the dog do? Uh, she has no situational awareness, which I think is something that only the intelligent can manage. Uh, and uh, not much else smart. She can attack the other dog with gusto and okay. hang on to his jowls. That's a skill of hers. Wow. But she's a, but she's a very good girl. <laughs> well, yeah. she looks adorable. Well, yes, this is the new honorary rewatcher. Mm-hmm. And so, so direct all hate mail week. to uh, Phoebe at Highlander Rewatched. <laughs> Dot com, com, which isn't even a real uh, email address or website, yes. so it's fine. The, the 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 best place to send hate mail. Mm-hmm. So All I'm right. gonna hand off yep. Phoebe to her mom. Let's and, let's uh, lose this dog and talk about her. birds, right? All right. Okay. So Frackin bird. <laughs> that's right. We're talking birds, not dogs, on this show. Uh, but a few more little. Uh, housekeeping things before we jump into the episode because it's been a few weeks uh i do want to say thanks for everybody for uh writing in uh we've gotten everybody's email there's been a few patreon messages and stuff uh really great uh to hear from people that we haven't heard from in a long time because well we haven't had a show in a minute but uh yeah um we will be probably doing some sort of reader mail episode uh in the in the coming weeks at some point uh hope probably when our schedule gets a bit too crazy to sit down and do a, a rewatch of a Raven episode. So that'll be on the uh, horizon. Uh, also, we do want to reiter- reiterate, like, where do you can watch this show, right? So it's like, uh, obviously, there's DVDs you can still get on Amazon. Uh, it's on Tubi. That's how I'm watching it. T-U-B-I. Uh, it's kind of not the greatest app, but it's got a lot of old, like, shows on it. I think including the original Highlander series. Uh, it's got also Forever Night, another show that's connected in weird ways to this. Uh, but anyway, lots of, lots of nostalgic like 90s era shows, uh, plus a bunch of other stuff and movies and stuff. So uh, there's that. Anywhere else, Kyle? Oh, you mentioned IMDb, uh, right? IMDb TV, it's available, which you also get through Amazon Prime. So I've been watching it through the Prime app. There we go. Uh, and uh, so it's actually, it takes a little bit more digging, but it's it's pretty readily available. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um, so uh, let's see. Um, also, I, I know some people have posted on our uh, Facebook wall and there's been comments and stuff like, uh, I know personally, I don't really use Facebook anymore. It's fucking great. I, I, it's the best. Uh, so if, if people are like, ah, why not get a response? Uh, um, I don't always see them um, because I took that shit off my phone. Uh, it's fucking great. Anyway, uh, but that that's why like our responses haven't been like uh, up to the minute or anything like that. Uh, I know we used to be much more responsive, uh, but that's okay. We, we just needed to like, uh, or at least me, I need to get a little bit, a little bit of distance from that social media nonsense. Uh, so that's good. Um, also, I did want to mention that uh, I still have not watched the Raven documentary. Uh, I think, in our previous seasons, we had talked that like, I'm going to watch it. You guys wouldn't. Uh, and then we could talk about it. I'm still kind of enjoying not knowing what's happened behind the scenes and trying to figure this all out. Uh, so don't worry, we will be watching that. So I'm sure there's a bunch of like, there's little tidbits that we're missing. And I think some of the, the emails that we got sent address those uh, about like why things are a particular way. Uh, but I can't wait to, to learn about it more and uh, watch the show. So uh, how about we jump into this episode, Kyle? Episode Liz. four. Uh, also, I've now watched this episode three times. Thanks. Thanks. That's too many times. Yeah. Well, every time we took off, I was like, oh, I should I should refresh and watch the episode. So I'd watch it again and woof. Oh boy, this episode. <sighs> well, let's remember we're trying to be more positive and be more character focused. Let's. It's really hard to do that. Say that. Let's say that as our mantra. <laughs> yes, right. More positive, character focused. I positively don't understand why characters do the things they do in this show. Is that a better way to phrase this? That's positive, right? <laughs> it certainly involved the word positive. See. Oh, and the episode is called Immunity. Fuck. All right. Let's just let's just <laughs> let's just blast through this thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. So we we open with Nick taking some pictures of some dude on the street. Do uh, we, don't, we don't have any IMDb descriptions or oh shit to talk about or anything like it's that. It's on the other page. It's on the other page. Here we go. Here we go. I'm All so right. Sorry. Let's do it. All right. Season one, episode four, Immunity. This aired October seventeenth, nineteen ninety eight. It was directed by Dennis Barry. Uh, this is two in a row for Dennis, which does not usually happen because you don't have time to prepare for the next episode. It's 
not like right. that has sh- shown normally, in this. Uh. Yeah, they, which they used to talk about in the the other Highlander documentaries all the time that while you're shooting one episode, the the kind of the director and the pre production team and all that are get are prepping for the next shoot simultaneously right so obviously that's hard to do when you're also on site absolutely uh so um let's talk about the writer uh this was written by karen harris this is her second of three raven episodes uh she also did the pilot reborn as well as two episodes from the highlander series which was rite of passage and timeless um she also wrote for a show called street hawk uh I, I have a note if we have the time we should watch the trailer i don't know if we really have the time to watch the trailer but everyone should just look up street hawk uh wow there's some familiar faces great name. In it too. oof oof maybe maybe at the end if we can remember we'll we'll watch it i'm sure i won't remember but uh street hawk look it up um so we get our regular crew back of amanda nick lucy and fucking bert again right he's back bert's back uh- color me so surprised that of all people coming back it's goddamn Bert. well remember like last episode we were like this guy's gonna be in eight episodes or something like, yeah and it's and fuck. he's right back there in it yep uh still a great character though huh Ugh. all uh-huh. right this episode guest stars tara rosling as marta uh antonescu uh she's another star trek discovery actor she did uh six episodes as president trina um she was also in the YouTube Red show called Impulse for two seasons uh, and played Barbara Bush in an early 2000s show called The War Next Door. Um, also, uh, another Marvel connection, too. Uh, she was the voice of Nova in the Silver Surfer cartoon in 1998. Because last episode had, uh, what's his name? Professor X, right? And Highlanders also had Wolverine in it. So. It did. The, Mar- the, the, the Avengers are assembling here in some way. In some in some minor way, it's like a weird team up of the Silver Surfer, Wolverine, and Charles <laughs> right. Xavier. Yeah, but they're th- this this team is coming together. Yep. Uh, I mean, you basically all you need is the Silver Surfer, so you'll be fine. Sure. Um, all right. Also, guest stars James Key as Stephen Collier or Stefan Collier. I have no information on that person, and Conrad Bergschneider as the jail guard. And I'm only Ooh, that. <laughs> yeah, right. That uh, jail guard. I got questions about that jail guard. Um, I, I, I'm i only bringing this up because he also played the prison guard, really good at the prison guard uh, role, in the 1999 movie, The Hurricane, which was written by uh, Dan, uh, is it Dan Morant? Morant? Moron? Moron? I, I think there might be a typo in my uh, my notes here. So, uh, But it's the same person that wrote The Gathering, uh, uh, who also was right. responsible for, did they write, are they the Beverly Hills Ninja writer as well? Uh, or no? No, I didn't no. think so. Somebody else. But yeah, like uh, we, we were all shocked. I remember we were like, they wrote The Hurricane? That movie's fucking great, right? What's this person's name again? Uh, Dan something, I think. <laughs> Shit. I just I just clicked on The Hurricane and I'm not... Oh, Dan Gordon. Gordon. I have Dan Moron written down. Uh, and that is, yes, I think I've written... Dan Gordon. Uh, moron so many times in my fucking computer. Uh, it autocorrects. Uh, so. It's just Dan like, Gordon. surely this is it. He That's is right. the one who indeed wrote Surf Ninjas. Great. So Hurricane's a book. He he was one of the writers on the, the screenplay. Right. Uh, very so good. It all comes together. There we go, right? Uh, episode description. Here we go, Kyle. Nick accepts an undercover assignment in which he has to infiltrate the Romanian embassy and recover a set of secret plans that had been stolen by one of its employees. And he asks for Amanda's help. Also, Amanda is being hunted by Stefan Collier, an immortal who insists that despite not knowing her personality, she is next on his list. What? She's not, does, despite not knowing her personality. Okay. I don't understand what that means. I thought he does know her personality. I thought that's like his whole shtick. No. Uh, I guess he just, I guess like knowing her fighting moves is not her personality. Like you don't really know, you don't know me, bro. I guess. I don't, I don't know. I don't oh, know. I, I, don't... I feel like my, my, t- my takeaway in this whole thing is, yo, he does know her, bro. Uh, uh, but, but what well, do I know? Let's let's talk. All right. So we open. Nick is taking photos on this on the street, right? Uh, this yeah, is like it's like patient number uh, seven or whatever it's called. Nine patient number nine. What's it called? Seven. Seven. Eleven. It's love it potion seven. number nine. Love potion number nine yeah. with Adrian Paul. 
Yes. We can't we can't stop these IMDb connections. Uh you can't stop, won't stop. Okay. Uh, so he he's taking pictures of this fucking dude with a briefcase and he goes into a park, right? What? Oh before, I left one <laughs> one quick note. I laughed out loud because at some point he has to follow this guy by car, and Nick is still driving the enormous truck with the cover. Like he is driving the most conspicuous car especially in a city where like yeah. people are not normally driving those kinds of vehicles like, i don't get this car i was i was howling i was like this guy's definitely gonna know you're following him doesn't matter he's about to die though so. yeah no i seriously don't get the car choice for nick like i don't understand if it doesn't seem like it it gives me any insight into his character other than like just why don't you get a new car, man? Like that's that's my question yeah. for him. Like your car, your car looks like shit. Like and like it's clearly not conducive to the work you do. He's right. not a contractor. He's yeah. not hauling heavy stuff. <laughs> like he and it would be different. Like he seems Buy a he Camry. Yeah, he seems to live in the city. He he's surrounded. Like when we went to his apartment that one time, like there's like art and all this stuff. Like I I, I would almost appreciate like why don't they have him live outside the city? in a cabin right like be be more like you know what i mean like then it's suddenly like it, th this car can represent kind of this duality about nick like that he likes to work with his hands and he's you know what i mean like just something about his fucking character like otherwise it's just, Actually, you're right it's just an odd choice it's an odd car to be driving around in how are you gonna fucking get a parking spot man there's a lot yeah, of cars in Toronto. That's... That's all the deleted footage from this is just him spending a half hour at a time looking for a place because you can't parallel park that thing. I would love that. I would love that. Okay, so uh, this this whole all this dialogue is absolutely just atrocious. It's 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 like a Neil Breen movie. Um, and so they're like they're they're doing this like handoff thing, right? Uh, <laughs> um. Oh my God. Also, I, I, I do want to say, what's the very first line of this set? The li for, very first line of the script is I'm on him, Nick says into a headset. And I was just, I wanted to like throw a beer at the TV and just break the, break the screen. I was like, that's the first line, a nebulous I'm on him. Like it's like an eighth grader wrote this. It's awful. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so this, this deal goes wrong. How, how does this shake out? I don't even understand quite what is wrong. Right. <laughs> so we're we're led to believe that this guy is given the woman he's speaking to, who is Marta Amonesca, a right. ro a Romanian diplomat. Right. He's going to give her this uh, this tube. Right. A, this a metal tube. tube. Uh, it's not just a truck that you dump things on. It's a series of tubes. Right. Uh, but, and I guess he's already given her something at like great personal risk to himself, but she's trying to pay him less money than they originally agreed, I believe, for whatever wow. this is. Okay. And they start arguing about it. And he's so, like, well, I'm not going to give it to you. So then he <laughs> holds off and shoots her. Actually, I think it's the other way around. I think no, she demands, yeah. it's, it's, he demands more money. Okay. And so she, then, she shoots him because she doesn't want to pay it or doesn't have it, right? And yeah. then I don't know. Then Nick runs out. He's like, "Oh, oh, oh!" He like, erupts out of the bushes. <laughs> and of course, he could have, I guess, maybe stopped this, but maybe not. It's okay. Uh, but my 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 favorite thing is he like erupts out of the bushes with a gun, and she goes, "Oh, you're very good." And I'm like, "Very good. It's in good. broad daylight." And he was just sitting right there watching you. Like it's not like he had to like. You know what I mean? Like very good at what? Waiting till it's too late? Yeah. I don't fucking know. <laughs> this is so like, stupid. Like, like he doesn't do anything skillful. He just is there. Uh, yeah, he's just there. Really and again, it's broad sense. daylight. It's bro why is this happening like this? Uh, maybe because they don't shoot have shoot someone in broad daylight. Like, why are they having a clandestine meeting in broad daylight? It's like one of those things where it's like either do it actually clandestine, or you have to obviously do it in circumstances where you don't shoot the guy. Right. Like. There, there needs to be different stakes. It's just, it's so strange. Like what, what, what's happening? Like I can't orient to this as the, the viewer. Yeah. I'm like, why are people doing this? This seems bananas. Uh, so yeah. anyway, then he's like, well, you're under fucking arrest because you just murdered this dude. And then she's like, my name is whatever. And she's like, I claim diplomatic immunity. And I was like, fuck you. I was fuck like, again, we're this coming back to this well. Yeah. Oh, Kyle, is there another episode? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. This episode is called immunity. Is there a similar uh, episode in Highlander? Oh yeah, with the dirtbag son who kills somebody, and that's just yep. called diplomatic immunity. Diplomatic and I'm immunity. like, this is the same thing. It's okay, this, cool, right? We're, uh, what's like? When did Lethal Weapon Two come out? <laughs> is that the one with diplomatic immunity? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the Ger- the Germans, like, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just been revoked. Oh my god. Uh, because like, why is this? No, We Love Up Two is 1989. So like, I don't know why this is like such a hot theme for them in the late 90s. It's but. just weird. And also, it doesn't play out. Well, we'll get to all this sort of stuff. But I have like, I'm gonna ask this especially early on, my question, like, what do we learn from this scene? I guess it sets up a mystery. So sure, right? Like, I can't fault it too much, but, you know, we don't know what I these mean, things- I mean, it sets up the action. We're, we're gonna try to figure this out, I guess. Right, yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of okay. So we know there's immunity, so we can't maybe get this person, and we know that there's secret plans or something. Oh, what's that about, right? And a chew. Uh, all right, so we get the credits, then we get we cut to the C Ronto city streets, right? We get more Latin music, right? Uh, which oh is, yeah, and I'm just like, is that just kind of what this show is? Is that Amanda's theme? I think it is. Two things. I remember I've mentioned in previous episodes. I like that when they go to it because it at least makes the show fun. It's better. It's at than least them. fun. It's bright but, and it's better than the generic techno stuff. Uh, it is. I realized something uh, today uh, that. Oh. Yeah. That. We're like, why are they picking this? At least it's fun. I think I have a very good idea why they're picking it. Guess what premiered in the summer of 1998? Oh, on HBO. On HBO, what? Sex in the City. Uh... I think this is an editorial choice to be like, oh, we can make this more like Sex in the City, which features music. This, this is it. I'm like, that's, that's even like a pitch or a note they got, right? Oh, it's like Immortals, Sex in the City, right? Cool. I think that's the vibe they're going for. That, maybe. I find that fascinating. Mm. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. Maybe. Who knows? But either way, it's it's at least I'm fun, here, right? Uh, yeah, right, I so, mean, I'm here for it. All right. So Amanda gets this buzz, right? And they've got like some wind chime sounds added to him. Like, oh, what's that about? Right? Okay. Uh, and then there's this fucking, this goon. He comes out of, uh, do you see where he's standing? Because I can't like, where, how many pages of notes do you think I have? Mm. How many fucking pages of notes? Guess. Eight. Fuck you. Fourteen. Eight. <laughs> Fourteen. We're on page one. <laughs> uh, okay. So he's in front of like a, 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 a like an audio book service store. Like it's like we read you. It reminded me of Seinfeld where they're like, oh, there's this place you call and they'll, they'll record you books on tape for, for like the blind. That's where he is. That's where this guy is. Anyway, whatever. Uh, so so I, I just, uh, my notes, I was just laughing because I was like, is the buzz this bald guy who's just cradling <laughs> balls? Yeah. This guy has like a, they've given this guy a tick where he just is holding like, they're not stress balls. They're just like metal balls. Right. They, these are called, I have what they're called later. Uh, but they're these, they're these Chinese, like they're from muscle control. You roll them in your hand. They have little, sometimes they make sounds. That's what these chimes are, by the way. Again, it's a device I don't understand. Like, oh, we'll, we'll fucking, oh my God, we'll get to it. I fucking don't understand how this episode's put together. Anyway, so Amanda's like, oh, fuck, I got to get out of here. She's got all these shopping bags. And then we just fucking cut to like later or, or something. We cut to seconds later. She rounds a corner. Her bags are gone. She has a sword out in the middle of the day. What the fuck? And then she rounds another corner and the guy's just there. This guy gets to places before she does every single time. All, all the time. And, and they like don't, the ex- man. they don't fucking explain it. Other than they have him say, do you wonder how I get to places before you do later? And I go, I do. I fucking do wonder. And then he doesn't say, he doesn't say. It's so stupid. <laughs> um, I think we're supposed to find out or we're supposed to understand that he has studied her so intently that she knows right. what she's going to do before she does it. And that's, that's how he's able to pull dumb. this off. That doesn't make any sense. Like, well, that's true. <laughs> but it's like, I guess it's menacing. I guess it's like, ooh, yeah. villain that, that Amanda can't beat. But like every villain, which there really haven't been many, but like <laughs> every villain that Amanda's come across so far, they've like, like, you're not supposed to think that she's better than Mario necessarily when she- right. When she defeats Super Mario's gnocchi. That's right. Like she made that gnocchi. Like, so I don't know wh- why this guy is so different. Uh, so th- they then discuss, and he's like, oh, I've been hunting you for a long time. Uh, <laughs> because, like, I have, like, a statistical certainty of defeating you. Yep. Or something. And I don't understand any of this. Like, <laughs> I feel like this, 
this guy knows so much and seems to know so much about so many immortals and have like gamified it in a way that like i'm willing to accept a certain amount of like immortals just know a certain low level amount about each other Mm -hmm. just like by reputation over time like we always kind of wonder like how do these people fucking know what's going on like but like i think we're we're all willing to just kind of accept like oh people hear the highlander and they're like oh shit that's sunk of a cloud he's badass like yeah yeah, yeah. we're just a kind of low level willing to accept that people would know that yeah and Um, i i I, i'm not bad with this conceit either that like the 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 like the this the the like the hook of this villain is that like he studies the person to like know their weaknesses and blah 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 i'm like okay cool whatever that's like something right like yeah makes him different than every other person yeah and like he seems but he seems to have like a a, a map of like, I'm going to fight this person. Then I'm going to fight this person. Right. Like he seems to have a holistic understanding of this in a way that like needs explanation. It's like, it's end game, right? Like, Oh, they've got these many points. So I, I need this yeah. many points, but they it, don't, exp- not, nothing's going to explain like that. They, they, they will finally start to explain the game in this. They finally just use the phrase, the game in this the episode, game for the right? first like, time. Yeah. But it's weird because we're getting all this before we even know about that. And so, I don't know. Everything's colored uh, by our lack of information. <laughs> yeah. But also it just occurred to me, they do have an easy out here, which is like, he could have gotten a copy of like the watcher disc. Oh, sure. That, that Callus stole. Right. Like by some control, like by some control. Who cares, right? Maybe he killed his Whatever watcher and got a disc, right? Yeah. Like he has, like he clearly has some insider information or something, Mm -hmm. but instead it's just like, just accept that this guy knows everything about everybody. Right. And because of maths, he will defeat Amanda. Yep. I don't know. That's the way these scripts go is just like, accept all of this stuff (laughs) and just, Oh, okay. Uh, So anyway, they fight. Uh, I at least love that. Like, well, she throws a, a crate. She gets a fucking, you know, trash can lid. Like there's something going on here, but like, yeah, yeah, she continues to be scrappy. Yeah, but like, uh, you know, the point is, is that she she loses this fight and has to flee, right? So we now yeah, establish like he's getting, you know, good. He's got the momentum, so she's like, I'm just gonna get out of here. Yeah. Uh, also, I love when she like flees again. It's middle of the day. There is just a trash can just sitting there on fire. It's just on fucking fire, and I'm like, where are they? Like. She was just in well, a, like, a busy she, shopping sh- district. Sh- she goes around the corner. There's no one else around. Like, who who lit the fire to not keep themselves warm? They're like, you know what? I'm gonna come back to this later. Like, what are the, what's happening? It's like such maybe it's a scorching commentary on the uh, the di- the gap between the wealthy and the poor in Cibronto. Sure, this is sure. a place plagued by class divides, Keith. You wouldn't even <laughs> understand how deep these rifts go. Right. Okay. So right, in this scene- right next to the Gucci outlet. <laughs> uh and then the garbage the, fire and the, and the audiobook store all right so what do we learn yeah. from this scene we know the villains like <laughs> mo right that's that's yeah and we know that he can beat amanda that's what this sets up that's, okay we're, yeah. we're okay as as clunky as it was right positivity Woo! all right so now which we one of these is the, which, I, I was immediately wondering the episode's called immunity so i guess this is the b plot <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly right yeah. amanda the immortal has the B plot and, and she absolutely does. It's not even just by name only. Like this yeah. entire storyline is bullshit. Like it doesn't, uh, you don't need it. Just cut it out. It, ugh, it's stupid. Anyway, we cut to Amanda's apartment. Uh, she gets all home. She gets all home. I said, she gets all home. She gets home and she's all flustered. Uh, also her shopping bags are she's- still gone. I don't understand. Like, Oh my God. Anyway, um, her and Lucy have this fight. Like get out of yeah, my she's life. She's just mean to Lucy for some reason. Right. I guess because she's trying to. Lucy's like, oh, you did this before. Like when you're worried about people, you just push them away. Right. So, uh, so Lucy's just not having any of it. And and have we heard this conversation kind of before? Right. Kind of ish. Yeah. This I mean, it's been like, pointed. why don't you run away? Why don't you run away? That seems to be every episode, and it's like that's such a lame. Ass. It just gets boring, right? Like. That needs to be mm-hmm. like for me, like the thrust of the Amanda character. Why don't they just make this the like the linchpin? Like it's Amanda needs to be like, I need to stop running. And this is her journey to like accept responsibility or whatever, right? Like it's it's practically it's like halfway there. And they just won't make the stories about that or make that part of her character. And it's a shame. Anyway, so that's that scene. Then we cut to the b-ball court. This was our opening clip. No, was this no, this was not our opening this, clip. This is just, your opening taunt. This was my opening taunt. I I, again, 
laughed out loud when this just cut to, I was like, what the fuck? Like what? Nick is just like in this rant, like also, where are they again? Like it's like, this looks like a real rundown part of town. Right. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. What happens here, Kyle? Uh, Nick does a lot of traveling. Mm-hmm. Nick does not like to, <laughs> like they're trying to establish that Nick is good at basketball, but he's just cheating. That's right. Uh, <laughs> and Bert shows up. So this Bert shows up. Because Bert uh, knows he's there or called him ahead of time and he was like, Yeah, meet me at the basketball court or whatever, yeah. right? Because that's how so, scenes happen in this. Like again, this is this is a great example of like this scene was written, I'm a hundred percent sure, without like exterior basketball court, right? That was not part of the script. It was this is just some fucking scene. And they're like, well, where do we put it? We got to do something, right? Like it's on the basketball court for no goddamn good reason. Anyway. Um, so Bert uh, reveals that the guy who is shot is involved in like this industrial espionage mm-hmm. and like gave over, uh, they, they stopped him from turning over the second half of these plans. But the first half is still in like this Romanian embassy. Right. Uh, or or wherever it was given. So this guy, this is nuts. like, I thought this was a private security company. Yeah, exactly. Like guy, what the fuck is happening? This guy wants Nick to break into the embassy to steal the first phase. But for Bert's plan to work, he needs to pretend to be married. What? Also, I mean, we we skipped over a little thing where Bert shows up and he's like, hand it over, give it to me. And it's like, give what? Huh? Huh? Nick fucking stole this shit. Like, like he took the evidence from the scene. From the scene. I mean, what are they going to say? I mean, also like, I did, did Nick flee the scene? I mean, did he not stay with her? Like just what the fuck happened? Like when the police showed up and said, what happened? Like, did he not say that a deal went wrong? Like, it doesn't make any fucking sense how, like, the police would not be like, well, what, then where are the plans? What happened to them? If there was a deal gone wrong, like, either Nick actively lied to them. I, it's it's bananas. Nick is a horrible fucking person. And it seems like, also, this stuff is really important. So I might say, Nick is a traitor or something, too, right? Like, what the fuck are you doing, Nick, right? Why is, I, well, that's, well, that's the weird part. It's like, who is their client? I yeah. guess if the client is the actual company, then maybe this is okay. Yeah, I, I read not, attention. Like, Who is the client? What's going yeah. on? So if if the client uh, was was he there to protect the the guy who had the vial? I if, think in, if, if to, that was the case, he didn't do his job because obviously he got shot. And he, I think he's there to recover the to follow this guy and make them like get those plans. I guess. See, but like. Nick didn't know that, right? I mean, like, what was, let's say the deal went according to plan, right? That the dude's like, give me $5 million let's, or whatever. Let's say. <laughs> yeah, and like, and they exchanged the, the deal. What what was Nick going to do? Because in this scene, Nick says, like, you didn't tell me what this was about. And I say to myself, well, if he didn't tell you what it was about, what were you going to do? Like, what was the point of you being there? Or, like, or maybe the whole point was just is it to just follow, to take and pictures? Take the, follow and take the pictures. Okay, all right. But for who? But then why do you t- then why do you take the tube? I don't know. And and who hired them <laughs> just to take pictures? Wouldn't you want to at yeah. this point get the get the info right? Like, also, where the fuck is like the CIA? The like, it, where's the fucking mil- like? This is so crazy that like this dude like runs security at like a press conference and now is doing this. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's too much! It's too much! All right. Um. <sighs> So it's also just the, the notion again. that it's phase two. They're like, what is this? It's phase two. I'm like, dude, again, a 12 year old write this. Like, are you kidding me? That's that's like the stand in in the script. This is phase two. Fucking bullshit. All right. Um, so, yeah, now uh, we got to move ahead. Oh, my God. We got to we got to plow through this. So let's keep, let's keep they, they got to get all so, like uh, married up or whatever. Right. This this like this little. So of course, all right. Of course, this is a the fact that needs to be married is a contrivance because who's he going to ask Amanda? Of course, right. Uh, So we cut back to, uh, I guess, Amanda's place. Yes, and they're still fighting this like this like couple's spat about like you should run away or whatever, right? Yeah, and then 
he just like appears and where is he that like can she hear the him talking like he's taunting her okay so but i was like where where is this guy the he's like down they can like hear her they the way they like do the camera work she gets like the buzz and he is like on the street Sweet. and i'm that's like that's what it seems like but i'm like what like she can hear him i i don't know i don't know it's so clunky right like anyway uh <laughs> um also, I'm just so sick of like this Lucy Amanda storyline. Like, I, 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 of all the characters, Lucy might be my favorite in a weird way. I like, think she's the best. She's the best one. Uh, but I'm also just like sick of what they're doing. Like, we need like this. This isn't good. Like all the things I want to like about the character. Maybe this is because it's all in my fucking head that I'm like, oh, like wouldn't this character be great if like? And they're not doing if. anything, right? Like they're just making her just be like a naysayer to Amanda without any substance, and it's. I don't know. It's really strange. Uh, so they go to like, I guess what? They, they just like uh, want to run away, right? Well, that this time Amanda's like, well, I know I was hot about hanging around before, but not this time. Time to right. go. Yeah. Uh, and then we just cut. But so it's like, like kind of too late for that. Because so we cut to here. the street and it's sh- this, this. This bugged me for so long. People Amanda, street. Amanda busts out of this like apartment building, right? Where's Lucy? She's gone. She's out of the fucking story until the last scene. I assumed yes. I, throughout my notes the whole time I'm like, is Lucy hacked up and murdered back in the apartment? Like, what the fuck? Oh, what, like, why? That's dark. It, it's so strange that like again, like I don't know if these scenes were supposed to go together the way they were, like in editing, like. Uh, but it really makes it seem like Amanda just ditches Lucy. Like they didn't have a plan for like, well, what happens to Lucy, right? Like no one's thinking about that. <laughs> I don't think. Oh my God. So she gets in fucking Nick's car who just happens to drive up and she's like, let's go, right? And so they drive off. Uh, <sighs> God. And I guess, oh my God, we, we got to talk about this. We got to talk about this. So uh, the the dude sees Nick drive off, right? Now, okay. his, his car is parked right there in front of the building. Like, he gets right in it. Now, instead of him just following yeah. Nick, who is driving the biggest car on the road, this giant The, the most conspicuous truck, vehicle ever created. He literally just turned the corner. You could just start following him, right? Instead of that, he goes, let's see what the DMV has to say, right? And he gets out with this <laughs> laptop. His laptop. And, and uh, a couple Again, days. with the talking computers are back. It's unbelievable. Uh, and also... He gets into this car. He has a laptop. He has some maybe like satellite bullshit thing in there. He has these win- cars that he never gets his keys out to unlock the car. The car is unlocked and both sets of windows are down. What the fuck is he doing? Like, unbelievable. Don't know. Unfucking believable. But he's then he's like, of, he's on a trust. He's fucking Googling like the DMV shit to find out the license plate. And it's like, okay, I guess that's fine. Like, will this okay, really like, matter? Okay. Not, yeah. I, I think no. This is absolute horseshit. Uh, God damn it. Um, so yeah, I, think- I, I think we're supposed to believe that through this computer, he sp- has like magic knowledge of these people. It's a little unclear why or how, but. Right. Uh, that's it. All right. So we it. cut to some fucking. Park. Also, weird side note. Uh, I was very, I groaned audibly when they're talking in the alley because he reveals that he is, they've never met before. Oh, and I was God. like, I was like, oh no, that means there's not going to be any flashbacks in this episode. Good point. Was, Good point. And, yeah, and, right. <laughs> and true enough, there are none. Which Fuck. is to say, like a lot of times in Highlander, the, the flashbacks are thematic. They're not necessarily related to these two characters, but like right, you know, something you else flashback. that happened yeah. that similar to this that you learn a lesson from. I ran in the past, or I I fought a person that I thought I was bested by, and through that experience, I learned this, and now I can pay it off. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I was like, there maybe there's still a chance, but like <laughs> I somehow when that line happened, like I knew, like I felt it in my bones that there uh-huh. wouldn't be a flashback. Um. So anyway, also separate side note that hit me when looking at this guy, because he's got like his one earring. Oh yeah, that earring. Uh, (laughs) I was like, this guy looks like a Bobo Chris O'Donnell. Oh, from Batman Forever? Yeah, Yeah. he looks looks like Robin. Yeah. uh, Only like with a slightly more annoying voice and slightly less handsome. All right. But like, he's Bobo Chris O'Donnell. Uh, I like that. All right. Uh, So- Anyway, then uh, I guess no longer concerned about the threat on her life, Amanda meets up with Nick to discuss this heist. Right. 
and uh, it's so they're all talking about it openly together. And and Bert is like, I don't think she should do it. She's a goddamn criminal. And I'm also thinking like. Yeah, maybe not, right? Like, this is like a really important mission, it would seem, huh? Like, national security. Well, this is like, like a really big crime you're about to commit, I think, is actually <laughs> right. also part of it. Because, like, that's the impact of them not being, like, government officials. Or actually, frankly, even them being government officials. Like, because, like, I'm sure the CIA would never want to admit to breaking into an embassy. So, like, sure. If you got caught, so, like, if you got caught, I imagine you would just go to jail for a while. Right. <laughs> like, so like they are contemplating doing crime. I mean, also, I mean, this. here's a question. Uh, they, they must know to some degree that she has phase one, right? I mean, obviously. They do know that. So they so know then why that this guy already pawned off. That I mean, I guess here's my question, and we'll get to this later as well. Like, it seems like there might be more legal ways to do this. Like, if the government is a, has evidence that this person, like, Th these plans are not hers, right? I mean, why don't they just stop her and say, give us the goddamn plans, right? Like, I don't understand why there needs to be all this, like, you know what I mean? Like, they, they have I'm evidence enough. Uh, yeah, I'm unsure. I think you're just supposed to accept that that would cause some kind of international incident. Sure. And move on. All right. On. All right. Anyway, okay. I mean, not that, not that that's great, but I think that's <laughs> the con that's I think the con conceit here is that right. you're just supposed to understand that and go with it okay so so also they're they're talking that like you're gonna be this is a dinner party or like some sort of party for 12 different couples that have given money to the like it's such an oddly specific like group of people because they're gonna like they're actually like assuming people's identities here like real people they're not just like party crashes. I, are they real people yes i don't know that they're oh, supposed yes. to be real people i think they are because i i get the impression that bert Bert says something that he's like held these, these people are on their honeymoon or something, right? And he's held them up like uh, on the tarmac. Like he, Bert has fucking power in this world. Like he is preventing yeah, he's a like, plane halfway He's crazy connected. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. I don't, like, again, what is this security? Like, is it, it's just like Charlie's Angels bullshit. Like, what is this? Like, I don't understand this organization, but uh, it's he's Bert's like, security firm. <laughs> Yeah, Bert's, who's, it's and he's Bert's still, and he's not even the boss. Is, he's still not the boss. Uh, but at some point, it's mentioned like you'll be a husband and wife, and you're you're newlyweds. And at this point, they're like, "Ugh, no way, cooties, gross." <clears throat> in the pilot, Amanda's Which, like, "Nick, get are. in the tub and like hang out with me, right?" And now it's like, "Ugh, I can't." Like, I don't understand where these characters are. Like, do, do they like each other? Yeah. Do they, they they want them to have this comedic tension of like, of course, right? Like, I don't want to work yeah. with you. And like, as husband and wife, like, sure, we get that. But that doesn't like track with everything else that we know about these people. And like, they seem to be friends now or something. It's or weird. Something. Or something. I just don't know why. Emphasis Amanda... on the or something. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um. So anyway, of course she eventually agrees to do it. Of course, because uh that's it but just as, as uh, an aside uh, this I, we've already talked about that this is the a plot i just had this overwhelming feeling during it i was like this was the show they wanted to make <laughs> they actually they're like really like they don't really want to make a highlander show oh they right. want to they want to make like this like caper Look at these two oil and water characters that right. are moonlighting to do, like, a bit, right? Yeah, like do yeah, do these like elaborate heists together. Like this feels like the show that they actually want to make. <laughs> like not the sh not the show I want them to make, right. but like this feels like what they want the show to be about. Yeah, because all the immortal shit is just is always just on the, the periphery. Like yeah, it's it, so strange. It never seems to matter. Like I feel like this is actually what they were envisioning. In some yeah. Way. That's so strange, just because um, it's so much like every other show. And like the immortal thing is like the coolest part about it, right? Like, why wouldn't you be like, yeah. oh, the thing that makes us different and interesting? Well, let's just ignore it, right? Like, yeah. fucking strange. Uh, so anyway, Amanda gets like the buzz or whatever, right? And this fucking dude, this 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 mm -hmm. guy, Chris O'Donnell, has shown up at the park by go how, how did he do this? He 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 did this from the DMV, like he. He found yeah, out where like Nick's home address is, track your car. not where your fucking car goes. Like computers don't yeah. make sense in this world or whatever. It's so stupid. What's the movie? Is it the movie Hackers? They hacked the car. Like, <laughs> it's, so it's, it's, like, it's like that kind of uh, thing. Uh, um, also, so, I, I do want to bring up because he's got his like, 
Oh, does he also seem to be like a neat, like a neat freak or something? Like yes, they've given I, him. I think a, he's supposed to have a lot of ticks. Yeah, th this actor makes interest interesting choices or something. Like he 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 rums his finger on the glass of Nick's car and like he seems just very particular. Like uh, again about this order, like I have to do things this way. Like this is how I play the game, right? I'm like okay, like but that stuff's never really expressed any further than like odd ticks that like give me question. Like okay, I guess he's like an obsessive. Yes. Immortal? Oh, okay. I, I don't know. It's It could be certainly more interesting than it is. Uh, but the thing I don't understand is they give them these, these little metal balls again, right? Uh, they're back, baby. They're back, and you can hear them, right? The thing I don't understand, right? Like, I, I as a viewer, I wonder, like, is he... At first, I thought he was trying to de-stress himself. Like, is he fucking a hothead, right? Like, Is he just too high-strung? Is he too high strung? And, and I'm wondering to myself, like I'm trying to project into the episode, like, oh, well, where, where will this go, right? Like maybe this is how Amanda wins, right? That this guy is so like, you know, but like you got to get him to lose his cool, right? Like get these are, balls. Are you, are you anticipating the, uh, the thing I have in my notes later 10 times, which is how does Amanda eventually win? This fucking, I can't believe they don't tell us. I, oh my God, oh my God. But anyway, so he's, he's got these balls, right? And I'm like, so, and we'll, we'll find out later. It's not because of that. The thing I could come up with, like, they make noise. I'm like, cool, it's a buzz. Like, but it, it's redundant. Amanda already gets the buzz when this guy's around. This only makes sense if Lucy needs to be cued in on this or Nick needs to be cued on this. That way we can, like, maybe swap the plots a bit, right? Or something, right? Like, that, like, somehow Nick gets entangled with this guy. And, hey, maybe that's even something. I mean, like, I am, like, literally spitballing here. But, like, this guy's studied fucking Amanda and knows how to beat her. Oh, spoiler alert, you never took on Nick. He's unstudied in that respect, right? And he and fucking Nick can hear these balls coming, right? And he's got the balls uh, to cue me. I, oh, 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 I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I'm on page four of my notes, everybody. Four. Here we hey, go. You've you made a lot of progress since last time you gave us a note check. So we're in good shape. Oh, my so, God. So anyway, this guy <laughs> is just just like uh, they end up going to a church. Right. Uh, is where she flees to. I guess this is our first hint about holy grounds, though. Yeah. Do they even really say it? Uh, he says holy ground very clever. And it's okay. like, okay. And I wish he, I, I almost wish he didn't say clever because it's like a, a no brainer move. I wish he yeah, said like how that, predictable, that smart. how predictable yeah. would be better. It's like, ah, okay. Right. Like, because again, he's yeah. there before her. How, how did he like fucking yeah. sprint? Oh, awesome. Can we just, I'm going to play this clip because we haven't played any fucking clips yet. And like, this is just, Hit full, of, just full of this shit. So uh, and this is right before the clip uh, we played at the opening of the show uh, where he gives his like whole speech or whatever. Anyway, uh, I just love how he makes his appearance here. It's fucking great. Where is he? Where is he hiding? Uh-oh. What? <laughs> what? He's Comes just- out from behind that tombstone. He literally is ducked down. Like, I, I just love thinking that he sprinted like as fast as he could from that park and is like gasping for air behind that thing. And he's just like, ah, ah, this will be good for my entrance. This is insane. What the fuck? I mean, I get it. It's for drama or whatever, but like, I don't know why they're meeting up. It's really strange. All right, moving on. What happens next, Kyle? We go to a, the Romanian consulate. So <laughs> well, so they have like this conversation here and we learn some stuff about this guy. Like we learned that oh, he yeah. killed his first teacher mm -hmm. once like the risk reward ratio was appropriate of like taking him out. Yeah. And then he I, talks about how like his life is so much better now that he can do all his complex calculations, not on an abacus. Abacus, right? I, was, I have here like, I was what, like okay. uh, what do we learn from this scene? And it's like, well, he, we know he calculates stuff. He talks about that, about that, right? But it's like, we know that already. We already learned yeah. this. We're, we're learning it a second time. It's bullshit. And we learned he killed his teacher. So I guess that's like, that's new, but it's really just reinforcing that he's a bad guy. Like he would go that far, right? Again, who gives yeah. a shit? You could have put that single line in the previous dialogue. It doesn't matter. And there's, there's nothing else. It's just taking money and setting it on fire. My God. Yeah. All right. So now uh, uh, Romanian consulate, uh, Nick and Amanda are there. Uh, and they're like, oh, where are you going to be sleeping? Right. And I'm like, sleeping? Like, what is the nature of all of this? Like, this has not been set up in any way. Right. Like this, this, this would have been better in that park scene. Right. Like 
perhaps Bert could have given him like, hey, this is the plan. And we could have been like, you're going to go in. Like, we, we don't get enough of that. But like, they're sleeping over like it's a fucking hotel. So strange. Whatever. Yeah, uh, I don't quite get it. And so there's all these like gadgets and shit that I guess Bert has provided them, like some sort of like hair dryer that's also what was there? And Amanda's very. Yeah, Amanda's very impressed by all this. She's right. like, oh, wow. there's like dental floss. Oh, it holds 500 pounds. Like, it's like, oh, cool spy shit, right? Uh, oh, and the microphone. Like, is that going to come up? Nothing fucking no. matters. None of this shit matters. Okay, so now we're in this jail. Oh, my God. Uh, and so the Romanian woman who killed the guys there uh, and Bert visits her. And, and I, I like, uh, my jaw dropped. Just I said, what's note. happening? What's happening? So it turns out they used to be romantically entwined. Which we don't find. When do we find that t- tidbit out, Kyle? When? Well, they clearly know. Like when there's five seconds left in the episode, they tell us, oh my God, oh my God, what a review. Yeah, I was just like, so I was like, wait, you people know each other? Like they had, and I feel like you can infer that they had a romantic relationship from this first interaction. I guess it's so strange though. I'm just like, what's up? Like, why is Bird handling this? It's so weird. Uh, Oh my God. Um, So it's just, it's just bizarre. Um, so, but he's basically trying to convince her, like, you know, I can get you out of here if you return what you stole. And, you know, if your lawyer is good, you can maybe beat this murder thing, right. which I don't know how that could be the case. But uh, yeah, I, you, I, obviously, you, you very clearly shot this guy and someone witnessed you do it. But yeah, uh, uh, in any case, they then uh, they want to move her. They're like, Bert, Bert tells this other police officer, like, you can, like, take her away. I'm like, one. He's given orders. Like again, what is well, anything, that's, right? That's like, crazy. What the fuck? He's like the most powerful man in Cibronto. Yeah. He's not even the boss. <laughs> uh, Fucking crazy. Uh, and, and so th- this 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 woman, she, she's like a, a, I guess she has no name. The red haired police woman, right? That's what I'll call her because she comes back, and it's it's odd yeah. because there's some editing choices. But like this cop, while she takes her away, the, the woman is like, I'm like from the R- Romanian embassy or whatever, and the police officer says uh yeah and i'm cleopatra of the nile and i'm like wait a minute what like do they not know who she this doesn't make any fucking well, that's, like do they no, think she's the, crazy what huh well huh? i think the the entire plan here is to jam up the paperwork from the embassy that would require them to release her okay so the cop is you're thinking that's that's what Nick established to not is. know and we're like oh we can't confirm that yet wow okay okay sure right well, and I think, and at some point, Bert reveals that that's the plan. He's like, I can jam this up for like 48 hours to like prevent them from releasing her. Yeah. So that's weird. Too, that's though, that's think, what this, but... that's what this thing is in reference to. And of course, like, and it could, whether this guy's in, in on it or not, like he does not have evidence that she should be released. So he's like, yeah, whatever. So either he's in on it or he's like, yeah, whatever. Fuck you. Like. But we're, we're not letting you we're not letting you go because you asked. Right, right. Um, okay, okay. That's fine. Uh so in this scene we learn that Bert tries to bargain and it doesn't work. We they don't believe or know who she is. Uh will any of this matter? I don't think it really does. Uh well, yeah, I think is- the thing that the, the tension they're trying to set up is that like in order for this heist to work, they need to keep her out of the embassy. So this is Bert's plan to like keep her in prison, and as we're gonna learn. She outfoxes them and gets out early. Yeah, I, so I don't really even understand is. that. Like, she needs to be like they need to do this before she gets back. Even that is they, just a strange conceit. Well, because too. like she's um, immediately going to go back and move the plans. I guess so. And, like, but, take the plans out of the country, which is what they, she oh. ulti- which is what she does as soon as she's released. I guess so. I think okay. this is. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I think, so that, sorry. Part, I'm I think that part of this is okay. Fine. It's like, fine. It's All right. Like, so now we're at this goddamn party. It's fine. Fuck. We're at this party. All right, uh, uh, at the the consulate slash hotel or whatever this is, right? Uh, and so we get this like there's some banter between them, right, or whatever. Uh, like, fine. Um, and th- th- they start making out, right, like to like hide their cover, right, or whatever. Yeah, or- from from the guy who looks like the Swede. Yeah, <laughs> in, yeah. In Hell on Wheels, like this is Monster Mash 3.0. Yeah, it's and I like is the is like the host of this party. I expected him to be like more significant in some way to like this. He's, he's I was actually like, oh, he's going to be like the 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 guy they got to like out Fox, but not really. Anyway, no, he's just there. So they like make out. 
they, they identify some fucking door. They're like, yeah, that's the door. And it's got like a plate and they're like, okay. And it's like, I, I, that's it. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. It's just like a metal door. It's not even that special. Like, <laughs> well, it's got like a key core keypad and things like that. So they got to figure out how to, how to deal with it. Right. Um, um, so I also could they go do some generic espionage shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I like gotta... they mingle with the party. <laughs> yes, can I bring something up? I'm sorry I have to interrupt because uh, this is this is the like absolute banana shit I've written down, right? Okay, after they make out in front of the store, we have a brief cut back to that police station, right? Uh, and yes. Bert's on the phone, and I guess he's like on the phone with the other jail, and he says like, "Just hold her for now," right? And it's like, okay, right? Uh, and then the cop that escorted the Romanian woman is out, it, out is back. And she's like, she's all loaded up and she'll be there by nine. And so we assume 9 PM, right? Like that she, she's mm. getting transported to the other police station and will be arriving at nine. Right. I hope this is right. Like, uh, anyway, this is, this is important just for later. And, and this is like a weird, like semi-legal illegal thing. Like people do, right. Kyle, you're a lawyer. What, which like, like moving thing. people around i believe like where did i feel like i, I learned about this recently I, I was watching that was it that robert durst documentary or whatever uh murderer serial killer robert durst like i think they moved him around in order to do, to do something weird like you can only hold people so long and they were like moving around the country or something it's very strange uh well in, i mean in yeah. this case she's just been arrested and like i, I doubt whatever like protection there is would have triggered this quickly sure sure, sure. Uh, anyway but i do but, I, I wanted to mention that because of the time and like things get so haywire for me at least in this i i can't figure this out anyway so we're at this goddamn party right and amanda steals this guy's like wallet right this the the this as you said the swedish looking romanian guy right um yes uh and there's a lot of banter, so, like she almost gets found out. They're talking about studying tropical rainforest diseases or cures or like whatever, right? And this guy knows something Yeah, because that's that. her cover story. Yeah, and it's like, but she bullshits her way out of it. I think we're just supposed to be impressed with Amanda here. Be like, oh, like she took like a big gamble on like talking about this with this guy, but she nails it and then they just go dance. Right, and, and I, I uh, like that. And I do wish though that like, I think that's what this is supposed to signify, but I don't think Nick's reaction confirms that. Like, I feel like this should be again, Nick's a point like of pissed. Yeah, he's like pissed about it instead of being like, okay, it's going to be okay. She's fucking great at this, right? Like, I don't understand why that's mm -hmm. not his reaction. Like, whatever. Uh, it's just because they have to have imaginary tension. Um, so yeah. anyway, she takes this fucking thing. Uh, they use like the stuff they've boosted and whatnot to break into that door. Right. She gets a, 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 uh, like a fingerprint off of this thing, which I also don't understand because w when they go to dance, she hands him her champagne glass. And I'm just like, mm. why don't you take the champagne glass back with the fingerprint on it? Like, I, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, but instead there has to be like more to it all. It's, it's like far riskier. Uh, and also like, not as like slick. I think like, I, I wish they really had a, like, uh, in narratives like this, I think we want to see a plan, them to tell us what the plan is. That way we're not like, and then, and then, and then this happens, and then this happens, right? And we have no grounding of it, right? But also then we can see how the plan goes wrong. Like that's pretty typical and stuff like this, especially since we're not, spoiler alert, we're not halfway through the episode yet. And they're already like at the heist. And it's like, well, what's going to happen, right? Like we need to know how it's going to go to a plan. And then we can see it go off plan and how do they, you know, uh, fix it, right? Whatever. Um, so uh back in the jail, jail yeah <laughs> this this the, is the thing that i don't understand the cop with the red hair that woman is back and i'm like wait mm -hmm. i thought we're at the new jail these scenes are it's so gobble gobbledygook right like so anyway then there's this like sex worker that arrives right and like she's interested in the romanian woman's ring and she's like oh is your hair real and i'm like wait what i was like is this what's about to happen we're going to have like a switcheroo plot. Wow. There is a switcheroo. Fuck. So the Romanian My notes woman say, is this a joke? It can't be. It just fucking can't be. <laughs> yeah. So these people just based on like the woman having blonde hair are like, oh, and they, they even do it like in the alley. In the alley. Like, oh, you're they're like, you're free they to, didn't have to go fill out in any the alleyway. Paperwork. They have no paperwork necessary. So the Romanian woman bounces by pretending to be 
she's traded the ring for like the wig so right. she's pretending to be the prostitute yes i and that 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 we that release happens a bit later too like I, again i feel like yeah. they film scenes that are like one scene and then they like splice them all up and then they and like and parse yeah. them out and it, it makes timeline stuff really weird because also again like i thought she was supposed to get there at nine o'clock right like uh so it, it makes it seem like wait i'm looking at my notes sorry guys this is just too confusing and i just say fuck it fuck it move on all right so we're breaking yeah. into this goddamn this thing right uh Amanda, out of nowhere, like they change into like leather coats, like like Amanda's like wearing like a whole leather outfit. Like I don't understand this either. Like, so aren't they, they trying? Don't they need in? to escape? Right. They like, why like did they sneak into the this party. place into the park? I don't understand this. Oh, and this is also why I wrote that nine p.m. thing down. I was like, wait, if they're getting there at nine o'clock, the party's over, and everyone seems like they're asleep, and it's nine fucking p.m. Like, what is this party? What is going on? Like. What? I don't know. It's so stupid. Anyway, this is all just from editing. Weird editing. Um. So Nick teases like, so, oh, Nick teases Amanda about this, this, the, like the brush, like that she uses to get the fingerprint. This is all just like horrible script stuff. I'm so sorry. I'm like hung up on this, but like he's like, I've never seen somebody take like prints with a, you know, a brush or like a, a makeup brush before. And here are my question. Here's my question, right? Is this a secret spy makeup brush, right? That that Bert has provided. Or is like Amanda being wily? Like I, I don't understand. I think Nick's we're we're in- supposed to think it's we're supposed to think it's Amanda being wily. Okay, so That's Amanda's being confused. wily, but for some reason, either uh, either Amanda brought them herself or Bert provided the strips of paper plastic that you extract the the fucking thumbprint from, but not a brush. I just am like, what is again? Like I think this is all Amanda. It's all horseshit, right? Like ah, oh, God. Well, like, see, they want her to be like improvisational, which is fine, but it's all meeting up against this other stuff. Like Nick has provided them a hairdryer that has a microphone. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, um, I mean, why not have a fucking scene where we're listening to somebody with the hairdryer microphone and then somebody uses the micro, uses the hairdryer and it goes on and you can't hear the, the last digits of the code, right? Ah, fuck, right? That was our, why, why? Why are these, 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 these fucking toys in this episode? All right. All right. So, I'm sweating. Uh, I'm not even drinking, everybody. This is tea. <laughs> Maybe you're sweating from all that tea. Maybe. Uh, so, they, the, the immortal uh, dude shows up. He just shows up to the embassy because he knows to come here. Say again? The, the immortal well, yeah, guy. Yeah, the immortal guy shows up uh, at some point. Fine. Yeah, what? it's like, he just like knows where they all are, are at all times, apparently. <laughs> um but like Amanda goes to like a mini fridge and oh that's where they're like the hidden compartment is. And she knows so, from the brand of the mini fridge that it's like a secret spy mini fridge that has like, oh, you know, there's a safe in there. Cause it says like, you know, cool safe 2000 on the side. Oh my God. Yeah. What? It's so stupid. So, uh, you know, she decides that, uh, like th- this other guy is arriving. So she wants to bail. Meanwhile, the, ambassador comes back so they have to stop trying to to crack this mini fridge and go hide (laughs) on the balcony right so like while they're there she now is like you gotta go we failed like this whole thing went pear-shaped we just gotta go and nick's like oh there's an immortal here isn't there like you're not telling me something Mm -hmm. so anyway uh also there's a cape i I don't don't have a cape (laughs) Oh, sure. I don't understand. So they crawl, they go out on the window, like the window sill to hide, right? You know what? This yeah. would be a great opportunity to use that dental floss that weighs dental 500 floss. pounds, right? Like it's yep. stuff is there. And it's, I, I'm curious if that was ever in, intended to be used. And they were just like, we don't have the time. Just cut it. Just cut, cut, cut. I have no idea. It's so weird yeah. that those devices are not used in just some fucking fashion. It's, it doesn't they make sense. They just wanted to talk about them. They just, yeah, it's, uh, uh, nothing pays off in these scripts. All right. Um, so. Also, the, the uh, security guard knows they're there because Nick left a can of soda. The, this yes, is, he did leave this a, is a so, can out. What? 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 These people are, spit, like, they were worried about Amanda coming along. Nick shouldn't be on this this whole deal, right? Like, get him out of here. Like, uh, yeah. uh, so, uh, anyway. 
they uh Amanda then goes off into like some garden yeah she just runs away she's like I'm gonna go take care of this I'm tired of running and I'm gonna fight this guy right now uh so it's like you could you couldn't wait you couldn't wait a minute uh so they go to fight and once again this guy is just like seemingly better than her like he's just gonna win Mm -hmm. but Nick crashes the party and holds off and shoots him and the guy like falls into the fountain right um and Amanda's like pissed at him for for interfering. Like, why'd you do this? Yeah, like you can't not interfere. Allowed. And it's like we haven't heard those rules yet, right? Yeah, we have no semblance of what they are, right. really. And she hasn't told Nick about it. So why is she upset at him, really? Like, I mean, this yeah. is, I don't know. Um, but then they just like, oh, we should go back to the A plot. So then they go back to try to steal the plans again. Yeah. Oh, I I do want to say like, this. I, I like th- there is one bit of dialogue here. I actually like. Which is sorry, Kyle's like, will you fucking hurry up? Uh, No, no, uh, if you like the dialogue, let's talk about it. Yeah, a positive thing, like, uh, although it'll be met with some negative uh, feelings too. But like, they have this conversation here, like, that mirrors when when Nick talks to Bert in his fucking dirty truck by the b ball courts. And he's like, man, I don't want to work with that person. I don't want to work with that person, right? Like, Nick doesn't want to work with who Bert wants to work with. He's like, how about Amanda? And we get a payoff here, which I think is interesting. Like, cause he's like, I work alone. And we, we, we do at least, this is actual character development that we find that because his fucking partner was murdered in the first episode that he's like, I can't be responsible for somebody else, right? Like getting hurt. So he yeah. picks Amanda because he knows she can't die. And I'm like, that's cool, right? Like that's okay. But then I of course- like that. I, I think that would have been great dialogue for them to have maybe when they were dancing. Like that, that scene when they were dancing is- I think wasted in this episode. Like they just have some quips about like some stuff that happened. Like, oh, you shouldn't have taken that. What are you just out for shits and giggles? Like stealing the wallet or whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. This is better banter. Like we can have like a real moment in the the dancing scene, right? Because like mm-hmm. otherwise, I mean, the dancing scene doesn't really. It's not a plot driving moment, but it can be a character, you know, driving moment. Uh, and we don't get that. This stuff should all be rearranged anyway. <sighs> uh but I, I also, uh, if we had to rewrite I also like this. The, oh, weird side note. There's also a fun callback seemingly to like money now about Bonnie <laughs> and Clyde <laughs> uh, things like that. Just a, just a little aside. The whole time during this episode, I was just in the background going, money no. Money no. Money no. Absolutely. Um, okay, so. Money no object is the actual name, not just that's money. That's right. Uh, so in this, so. Uh, Oh my God, this episode, they, they run off, right? They escape, right? Uh, the, this is a remarkable, I believe, don't the security guards, aren't they not alerted when this, the, the gun goes off? Like the way this is all edited. Like, I'm like that, that wasn't, it the certainly doesn't thing. seem, it doesn't seem like there's any, uh, urgency. No, here, no, not at all. Term. And then there are, I'm not joking, like two scenes where like the, like the, the the woman, like this Romanian woman, walks to the car with a bag. Like they show her just putting luggage in her car, and then she's like, "I forgot something." And they, they the camera holds on her, and they just let her walk all the way back inside before they cut. And then there's another scene later when she comes back out with the things she forgot. And I'm like, "What are we watching? Like, why do we need to do any of this?" And again, why isn't it that she comes out? We edit this together, so we, we get Nick shooting the fucking dude right at the in the garden. We cut right to the 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 the, the, the limo that she's gonna get in. All the guards mm-hmm. look up because they can hear the gunshot go, and they go, "You get in the car right fucking now. We gotta like hightail it out of here, right?" Like that also like just like because all she's doing is like leaving to go to the airport. But now we can have some urgency. Like there's somebody there after her, right? So they th- whatever. It's so bananas that these things like don't have any pay. A gun goes off. They they were so worried about security, and they had to plan this whole secret heist, and they just shoot a gun on the grounds, and it has no repercussions none <laughs> none 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 at all it doesn't matter uh meanwhile nick leaves a coke can on a on a counter and that that mattered oh my god oh my god they're all like right. this is a pepsi household we gotta get him right uh, uh so this guy ends up murdering so, a guard uh i guess which is whatever right yeah well a guard a guard finally comes by and sees this so they come to check on it and he's like and you're dead <laughs> um, uh so uh they then go back to the a plot she uh the 
what's her name the ambassador gets into a limo and drives off right and nick and amanda just steal a car yeah they just steal a car, car. Uh, which i'm I also think... like how did they get there did they have their own car it's unclear yeah, right? why they needed to steal this one or maybe they like got dropped off. I don't know, but they steal a car and they're in pursuit, I guess. Right. All right. And so they're in pursuit and they call Bert, right? And so they have this like this conference call where they're like trying to figure out to, what to do next. This is absolutely bananas. Uh, so Nick calls Bert and it's like, uh, it's all I can do. And he's like, my team's on it or whatever. And it's like, my team is on it. Like, who are these people? Like, I don't understand what's happening. Like, Oh my God. Uh, uh, and so they said there's six airports in the county. That's a lot of airports, but I guess, I don't know how many airports Toronto has. I guess I could believe some small airports. They've got at least like- two Well, I guess airports, if, right? if you count like private airports and things right, like right. that, okay. like there are like a lot of like tiny things that are technically airports. Right. So, so I don't know. This, I assume that's included. This is this is where I'm getting confused because this is why I mentioned earlier. Oh, this? Like, oh, yeah. This is where you're getting confused. I, like, isn't there, isn't there something legal they could do, right? Like, I don't understand where, because they're like, she's about to get on a plane to wherever. Like, why don't they just alert security? Romania. These, Romania. Well, they say, oh, this, this, I don't understand. I don't understand what's happening. Uh, well, why don't they alert security to just be like, detain this person, right? Like when she shows up at the airport, detain her, right? Like there's, there's already police, spoiler alert, at the police oh, station do, or at the do, airport, right? Do, do recall though, this is pre 9-11. Sure. So like sure. the, the law enforcement presence at all these things is going to be much lower. There's yes. going to be a lot less security to deal with. I'm sure. But um, I think they could also still and, make a phone call. And she might be taking a... Yeah, and she's like going to a helicopter, right? Well, that's the other As thing. It's like she, she doesn't go to an airport. And they also, like Amanda says, like Bermuda, that's where she's headed, right? Like out of nowhere. And I'm like, wait. Which I was like, huh? how is she getting to Bermuda? For I a second, I was like, I was like, there's no way you're flying a helicopter. To yeah, Bermuda. right. So like, well, I just assume Bermuda is a four and a half, by the way, Bermuda is a four and a half hour plane, a commercial plane ride from like North Carolina. Uh, it's like the closest from North Carolina. That's yeah. the closest you can get. So yeah, I don't so know. like, I imagine this is just taking her to a plane somewhere. But uh, in any case, they are. She's on the run. It's and safe Bert's like say. I'm on my way. Uh, and but oh, Bert says I'm on my way, and I and then like hangs up. And I was screaming at the TV. I was like, on your way where? You just said there's six airports. She's head, and then Amanda for some reason says Bermuda, and I get um, we're not. I wasn't even sure if anyone agreed to that. Really, like, is that where they really think she's going? And then Bert's just like, "I'll see you there." Don't know. And I'm like, "Where the fuck are you going, guys? Like, yikes, yikes! This is national Zeist. security, right? Phase Zeist. phase one, phase one. Oh, these are like well, this Marvel. We don't movies. know if this it's is, national. This, maybe that's what this was. Do you think these are the Marvel movies? This is Phase One. This is Phase, phase two? One. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> they've got they've got the they've got the script to Captain America. And right, and she was worried about them. losing five million dollars. Uh, uh, it's worth a lot more than that, right? Let's get these Marvel movies yeah. out of that tube. Yeah. Well, I I don't know that we're supposed to think this implicates national security, or are we? We know it's like corporate. What is it? What the fuck could it be? What do you hold on? Hold on. Hold on. What do you th hold on? What do you think this possibly could be? If you don't think this is involves national security, well, no, like corporate espionage is a thing. Like, I guess, all right, you, you steal some, you like, you steal plans for someone's like what products they have in research and development. I, you steal their intellectual intellectual property. Sure, like, all right, all right. You 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 boost whatever like. I thought they. I thought there was like some that. dialogue that said like the it's government funded research or something. I think there's government funded stuff. Uh, also, I do want to say that like at one point because this is so like shittily, it's it's just so hollow. When they're on the b ball court, Nick asks Bert like, "Yo, what the fuck are these plans? Like, what what am I holding?" Right? And Bert's bullshit response is, "Oh man, even if I could understand all the technical stuff, I I don't know. Like he couldn't explain it. It's like, what do you mean you couldn't understand? Like what kind of technical stuff?" Could it be that you couldn't just answer like it's a missile or it's a, a computer chip or a virus or a, like you have fucking no idea what's on this paper? Like no fucking way, man. No way. He's like, I can't even understand it. It's because they can't like attach anything specific to anything in the plot. Anything. Oh, my God. Page 12 no. of 14. Here we go. Hey, we're almost done. We're there. So, we're on the docks. The docks. So somehow they get there. They, they just get there. 
They just get there. And they're going to take a chopper to somewhere that will ultimately get them to Bermuda. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. And it'll be, the pilot says it'll be 20 minutes. I 20 minutes till takeoff or 20 minutes till he gets there. I'm not sure. Uh, It sounds like the pilot, like they have the chopper, but not the pilot. And the pilot is running behind. Okay. So just just a reminder that this next scene takes place over the course of 20 minutes, I guess, because that that chopper takes off soon. (laughs) Uh, Also, isn't it daytime now? Yes. Well, I think they showed I, I it. This, I think it was like transitioning from night to day. Like when that the, the, the security guy pulled the, the immortal out of the, the pool, mm-hmm. like the sun was coming up then. So I think like the heist happened like okay. overnight into the see, like, but we're always questioning like when do things happen? Everything just bleeds together. It's uh all right. So uh <laughs> um so they Nick just pulls out his gun instantly, shoots a guard. This guy goes down. It's yeah, like, extremely just comical. This guy. I love it. Like, I love it. I don't know what these plans are, but you've now killed somebody, most likely. Right. Over Nick, them. who has what sort of authority to do any anything with the I mean, Nick with this he, gun. He, I there's only God. one, there's only one law. I mean it's law. Maybe maybe we need to get this show in front of some people. Like this show, if if anything, is a warning about gun safety and, and it in the hands of a person who maybe shouldn't really have it. Like Nick who pulls still out his PTSD from the pilot. Yeah, right. Like Nick is. Nick needs to holster that bad boy real quick. Like it's, I don't feel he comfortable just with Nick. Shoots first and asks questions never. <laughs> right, <It's> like <laughs> that's his that's his mo. Uh, um, um. So anyway, uh, this continues. They then uh, the Swede guy is there, but is irrelevant. Yeah, he's just like, uh, I don't have a weapon. And it's just like, okay, like the tension is dissolved so quickly. Like there's no standoff. Yeah. There's no like, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's no in, us in but, danger of losing and, the plans to the water or, or just something like things just like yeah. immediately dissolve. There's there's hardly any tension built into this episode. Uh, and they're like, and she's like, well, this is like my life is on the line because like the government invested 5 million bucks into this operation. Right. So like, if I come back without them, like I won't get a parade, like I'll get- It's a bullet in the head, she says, head. holy shit. And it's like, really? Okay. <sighs> I guess. I guess. Uh, I guess. Uh, Whatever these things guess, are, they're yeah. so important, right? Uh, anyway, and then like Amanda punches punches her out because yeah I, diplomatic immunity my ass ridiculous ridiculous uh and then and then cops show up and then like then everybody does show up right like burton and his cavalry as he says show up too late to do anything right like i of don't know how they need to get to here anything. and also who are these they, they have like sirens like who is bert who is he leading i don't understand any of this any of this at all doesn't make any sense and it still doesn't make sense for nick not to be a police officer this whole plot everything could have been fine just make nick a police officer well, he's um, doing a bunch of crimes in this episode. Yeah. Uh, also, I, I love- don't become not crimes if he's a cop. Well, sure. But at least there's a reason for him to maybe be involved or something, right? Like, Well, that's I, fair. And have that's access to things and to be like, hey, maybe it's okay that Nick shot a person, right? Maybe. I, mean, I don't know. Maybe it's okay. Maybe. Uh, anyway, I, I don't understand this. It's just, it's just such weird writing. So Bert pulls up and he's like, Oh, I fucking got this now. Like, cause he's like a fucking dickhead. He's such an asshole. He's like, oh, it's my collar. Like he he shoes them off. And Amanda's like, okay, and starts walking away. And then Nick gets angry. He yells at Amanda, where the hell are you going? And it's like she's walking to the car, and Bert said it's time because to leave. She said she just said to leave. And yeah, and I'm just like, leaving. why would you say that? Like the the lines people say in this show don't make any like writerly sense. Like I'm just like like of course she's walking to the car. Like what do you think is happening, Nick? Like you're a detective. I think like oh detect detect right like Jesus. Um, Anyway, uh, so, so then Amanda's just like, I got to go do this immortal stuff. That's that's where I'm going because we, well, we just have to wrap that plot up in by, by me just saying Keith, I'm going to go do it. So Keith, you've been angry this whole time. This was actually the only part of the episode that makes me angry. This is because what happens? Amanda just. Oh, I thought it was Bert. Like, I thought this this oh, when Bert says oh, that this no, was my sorry, wife, we should, we should play this. Oh, yes. Okay, because yes, this is my this. very last clip of the show. And I I. I could not fucking believe this. I was in shock. Oh my God. Here we go. Hey, 
We let her go. You let her go? <laughs> this is a murderer, fuck? and you let her go home? <laughs> we had what we wanted. You have what you wanted. I wanted her to do life. This is so fucking... Not with immunity. Not here. But back home, a woman loses five million hard currency in a botched deal. Some place they call that treason. It's enough to get you shot. I gave her the choice. Look at him just staring. She picked the hard way. What? She always did. Something else you're leaving out? Some music is like the room. Nothing relevant. Nothing Tell relevant? Anyway. What? She's my ex. Fuck you, show. Like, also, look at the way these, like, li listen, I, I have to play this again. Fucking Bert says nothing relevant, followed by it's my ex. Also, if this was like actually like real life, like there, if, uh, there's no way Bert's even allowed to work on this, right? Like no way you're working. Well, allowed by whom? You're a, I don't know. I don't know. You're <laughs> assuming an institutional structure. That gives I, a shit. <laughs> well, whatever. But I, I love, I love that Nick like is giving him this like steely look and he's like, tell me anyway. Anyway. You know what you're leaving out? Nothing relevant. Tell me anyway. Tell me anyway? Like, why have dialogue at all? Why even, like, why don't they just say facts? I don't understand. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, also, the fact so, that they're letting her go is bananas, right? Like, and like, it's again, not Bert's choice. Like, hey, she murdered cops. somebody. She fucking murdered somebody. What about his family? What about like justice for any of that shit? And Bert just has like, so, uh, so much like uh, diplomatic or governmental power. Oh my God, this is remarkable, remarkable. Anyway. <sighs> then so what happens, Kyle? F final that's confrontation. the resolution of the A-plot. Yep. Well, this is the part that makes me angry. So sure, Amanda and this guy just kind of meet up. They they just kind of meet up in hell. <laughs> like they, <laughs> I think this like, looks awesome. This fucking looks this awesome. This actually does look great. It does. And I was like excited. I was like, oh, what's going to happen here? This is like a great set dressing, which is also was like I mean, it's smart. nothing. It's like, just some lights and smoke uh, a la Dennis Well, that's the thing. Barry. Like, this proves that you can like your budget doesn't have to stop you from creating cool visuals. Sure. Because like this cost, like this set costs like the same amount as like a ham sandwich. Right. And it looks great. Like, yeah, they're just straight up meeting in hell. Look at this. And like, that looks cool. It's like, fine. You, you want to see whatever is about to happen here. Spoiler alert. You won't get to. <laughs> yeah. She, like this is cool. Be, she right. that they square up and then that's it. Yeah, we don't they, know how it how it how it goes down, right? So then <laughs> um, he just she just beats him off camera. And like at this point, they fought three times. And it is gone. She's gotten her ass kicked twice. And so far as we know, like she's learned nothing. Mm -hmm. There's no and like it's not even like the fact that she made the decision to face him like makes a difference because she already did that. Like right. we witnessed her do that already. Yeah. So it's like, there's no explanation. None. Or so, understanding of why she's so able bad. to win. She just beats, she just beats him. She just beats him. <laughs> and it's like, I, it, it just felt so unearned. It and is, like, it is unearned. And it, it, and it reduces the B plot to like complete, irrelevancy yeah it's like nothing there was no interaction between the two plots like amanda doesn't grow or learn or do anything right she just can't beat this guy but now the episode is ending so she can beat this guy and yes like, yes yeah th there could have been something where uh you know like perhaps uh you know she fights fire with fire right like maybe she studies him or maybe uh again like if we if we cross these plots a bit right like we can have uh, the immortal guy interrupt the heist, right? Uh, but maybe like Nick can have a tussle with this guy and maybe he notices something about the way he fights because he's a fucking detective and should notice things, right? Like, and he can tell Amanda that like, hey, do you know he always like leaves this unguarded like or something, right? Like he, he can provide the info that she needs. Whatever. Or even like the, the lowest disruptive thing I could think of is this guy interfered once she bluffs him into thinking that Nick is there again. 
Oh, okay. So like when they go to fight, he's constantly looking out for Nick. Oh, okay. Because based on that prior information, like he studies her, like he's he's like, oh, I need to incorporate this new information in. Right, right. So like be on the lookout for Nick. But of course, Nick's not there. Right. And that that gives like Amanda the window to beat him. Yeah. There's something tricky like that where like they fold, they just do something. It doesn't even need to be a good explanation. It just needs to be like, this something, she just gets something. like she just gets like completely shit housed yeah twice in a row by this guy and then she beats him off camera like we don't even get to see it like we don't even get to see even if it was just like she did a tricksy move yeah <laughs> like the, i mean also like the tricksy hobbit that she is like i mean that would be fine right like i also think just it the, does uh sorry god god <laughs> just the combination of not seeing it and there being no explanation is one of the just like most deeply unsatisfying things it could possibly be yeah uh but i was also gonna say like, on, a, on a larger scale like i i think it really does a disservice and uh i'm not gonna say there's any sexism in the world of highlander uh but like it's it's a real shame for her character like when you say like what makes duncan mcleod a hero right like you get to say like oh it's because he said these lines he he gets to like you know he never gives up right in the face of blank 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 and blank right like there's examples within the show and like this just cheats this character out of that like it's just like oh and she won like we don't get to see like what about amanda makes her fucking awesome to do this right i don't know i think it's yeah. just it's so fucking lame and it's like it's like they're digging their own grave with this character. It's like here's a moment to give your character something, and they're like, you know what? Let's not and let her keep being kind of hollow. It's it's awful. Because uh, Amanda, like I, the more we've been watching this, and the more we, we've been thinking about it, because I know what b- people people obviously don't like this show. Uh, and, but also, there's there's such a there seems to be a, a big fervor that like Amanda shouldn't ha- have her own show, right? This should have been the Mythos show, right, or whatever. I I. Not that you couldn't do a Mythos show or whatever, but like I think that that argument doesn't hold weight. I think there's plenty for Amanda to do, and I think they just don't take yeah, advantage. Yeah, you just have to, and you, you and just honestly, have to make her a better character. I mean, this is like the writer's fault. Like, it, it, there's nothing wrong with the actress. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with the premise of this show. Like, I mean, I shouldn't say there's nothing wrong with the premise, but like, they're they're fucking shortchanging her constantly, and it's yes. it's a shame. And uh, honestly, I th- I think a lot of the same problems or quote unquote problems that we point out about having Amanda as a host, like the way you need to reset the character, the way you need to, you know, you need to do things to show them being heroic because it's not baked into the fabric of the character you knew before. Right. All those same things are true of Mythos, in some ways more so because you know Mythos is like a mass fucking murderer. Right, right. Like Mythos is also a coward, not like a coward, but he's like a, he's a wily, wormy guy. Like, right. You would be doing this, you'd need to be doing the same kinds of tweaks and the same kinds of readjusting to build a show around that character. Right. Like, so it's like, you know, it's really just a matter of how you an- handle that exercise. It's not something that's inherently flawed with the, the character. Right. Anyway. Okay, so this so, is the this is the show. Final thoughts, Kyle. I've I've some questions for you uh, before we rate it, if that's okay. No, there's just like a denouement. She comes up and oh, says, right, right. "I won." And the one thing I did laugh a lot about is she has his fucking balls in her hand. Yes, the, they're called uh, bod- boating balls or bouting balls, right? Yeah, and that I was just like, oh, there's no symbolism here. Anyway, right. Uh, and and Lucy's there. Lucy's there, and she's like, "I'll pour us champagne," and it's like. Huh? Uh, Nick is waiting for her to come home. Like they're just yeah. so worried. I, I I don't understand. Uh, also, as usual, like how do these characters meet? Right? Like how did she meet that guy in the alley? No, oh, and I he's looking for her at all times. <laughs> I, I just like accepted it at that point. But... Oh, also, did you like that uh, Amanda comes in like the 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 greenhouse was... door? Why doesn't yeah, she come in like the front secret... door? Why does she climb up a fire? Like how did? Why? Why does this happen? Why? No idea. She's, she wanted to surprise her friends. Ta-da! Yeah. It <laughs> snuck me. in the door. You thought I was dead. Uh, so here's some questions. Um, does well, we know that the like the immortal playing the odds like that. There's just so much stuff that doesn't have payoff. So his whole thing doesn't have a payoff. I guess we've already discussed that pretty much at length, right? That like since we yeah. don't know how she beats him, the motivation for how he fights becomes irrelevant. I think correct. Like we we don't see him doing some moves that like. Or, or other than the- just like as an affect like sl- just like slaying the cat has his mask exactly he has balls and stats right. uh, i guess it's i guess it's reduced to that 
yeah so i don't uh, want to say slaying the cat's mask is pointless but it's just for like flair it is just for flair right um but rick flair who uh considering this episode is called this uh I, I was wondering, does diplomatic immunity matter at all in this episode? I think I argue, no, it doesn't. It's irrelevant. It does. How? What's it, what's it matter? That's, well, well, one, like, does it matter cosmically? Eh. But like, it is integral to the plot. Like, the reason she can't be detained and they need to go through, like, there's this time crunch on the heist. See, I see, I disagree, immunity. though. The reason Bert lets her go at the end is because of the complications with their diplomatic community. Okay, I agree with that, that he lets her go at the end, but that's just like a bullshit end to that story plot. Like, I mean, like, also, I don't think he should. I can't believe he did that. That's horrid that he did that. What a fucking piece of shit. Uh, but like, I think you could accomplish this whole thing without, like her diplomatic immunity, for instance, doesn't get her out of jail. Like, like Bert says, I can hold her for 36 hours, he says. Great, there's, there's our ticking clock right like see they, they've, they've set up different motivations right Bert can hold her for 36 hours we got to get the heist done in that time great because like when she even shows back up at the consulate she like lambasts her two goons and she's like oh you guys didn't even do shit to get me out and I'm like yeah what the fuck like that's weird uh but like she doesn't need to be a diplomat because she just changes costume costumes with someone else and escapes. She like literally breaks out of jail basically. So like her diplomatic immunity isn't a factor in that. It's just that she gets out. Like she doesn't have to move well, around. Like none of that stuff a, really that's a matters. Device, that's the device to move up the clock. Like their heist is planned around, they have X amount of time. That's See, a device but, but, to, to skip the line. But they didn't like, skip the line. Know, they were already in a rush. See, like that's, that's the problem is it's not like she got back. They never... Their heist had already gone completely off kilter. Like they were already on the, the the ledge. They were in the garden. Like before she escaped prison, right? Like or whatever. So like that's or or did she? Are I they? don't know. No, it's it's her return that no, causes them. To it's not off. even that. It's uh when they're gonna do the security sweep. They said that because Bert's got a countdown. Like also Bert doesn't know she escaped jail uh at any point, right? Until they see her, I guess, right? Hmm. So like, because like Bert's doing like, while Amanda's doing the safe thing, like he's like, you got one hour and 50 minutes and 20 seconds. Like he's given seconds and shit. Like, so like, I, I think that the clock is already ticking for the security sweep. See, like this, is this gotcha. is problems. Like we, we now have like three different clocks. It's like, I got 36 hours, but we negate that. Then we got the security sweep as our ticking time clock. That's the only one that seems to actually matter because they come in. Uh, and then we have this other thing that she like gets out early but like that doesn't again that doesn't come into play. I don't think she needs to be a, a diplomat in any way for this to just like move ahead. It's so stupid. It's Probably so stupid. Not. Also, the thing that made it interesting I suppose in the, you know, other Highlander episode is like it's always that deal with like it's an immortal or whatever, right? Like there has to be some sort of other justice carried out. Like what what happens when you can't carry out justice in the the normal way, the normal paths, right? This person has like a get me out of jail free card. Uh and like, but this this is not addressing that in any way. Oh God, it's so stupid. Um, <laughs> also, I love uh, we we talked about how close Bert and Nick are, uh, and you know, Nick I guess didn't know that Bert had an ex wife. Was it is it even his ex wife? He, he just says ex. That could and be he, a girlfriend. Okay, just just so we understand, Bert had a, a this woman was his girlfriend, and it was such a special relationship that he lets a murderer leave the country over this, right? Like. I, I don't know. I don't understand. Uh, I think these people are all bad. These are very bad people. Uh, uh, no, no argument here. Kyle, we got to rate this. How many stolen metal tubes would you give it? You know, I'm giving this one two metal tubes. Two? You all know, right. I, I, I feel like I've gotten a little better at shutting my brain off on these episodes. <laughs> there's, some okay, there's some okay banter. Uh -huh. Part of me, even there's, I find something like I enjoy somewhat the flair of Chris O'Donnell. Like it ends up not paying off, but I wish this character like, was better. I, I think he could be interesting, right? Like he's he's got some flair. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, you've got some pizzazz. Like this is on the heels of Mario too, who had some pizzazz. I'm like, okay, there's like a a vein of these kind of compelling is the wrong word because i think you need more motivation to be really compelling but like entertaining they're affected villains. for sure yeah they've got style and i'm like okay with that 
And I all think style, that, no substance, eh? Maybe, maybe. Yes, essentially. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, I just kind of let this episode wash over me, and had just like an the cleansing okay water, the cleansing time. waters yeah. of Raven episode four. They wash over me. Yeah. And I, I think it was more about just like not thinking about this episode too hard because it didn't have the the components I like about Highlander, but I was more entertained by it by than the other episodes so far. Wow. So, there we go. There we Choo go. Tubes. Choo uh, tubes. Choo tubes. Choo tubes. How many refrigerator safes would you give this episode? Oh boy. I think I'm gonna give this a one. A one refrigerator safe. Uh, I, I. That's the number in this episode. It is. Uh, no, I. I don't think I can like. To me, this. I. I these scripts are all so puzzling for such different reasons, and I think them giving Amanda the B plot. There, there doesn't even need to be a B, be a B plot in this or something, right? Like, I, I don't understand why this all wasn't the heist to some degree. I, I, these episodes just like accomplish nothing. Like, I don't learn about the characters. I don't feel like their relationship is brought together more. I, I don't think like her and Lucy, like, I, again, we said we're going to talk about character development at the start of this like series here. Uh, but it's also because we didn't know what we, we, what was in store. Like, I assumed there'd be more character development so we could talk about it. There's and there's really just, not. it's just static characters. And it's, uh, it's, it's just, a shame is the best thing I can come up with. Uh, it just, it just feels really broken. Uh, also, to some degree, some of these things, like they feel like scripts that are from something else. Like, I can't put my finger on it. And maybe the documentary will, uh, you know, illuminate some of these things, but like, it is just such randomness. Uh, they're not cohesive. They don't feel edited uh, in a good way. Uh, the locations, yeah. I think like the location scouting, like Highlander had such phenomenal location scouting, I think. Uh, like they, it they really, really did actually. Really did. That's, and that's it, quite true. Um, even, I mean, especially in the, the Europe episodes in, in Paris, but like even the, the, the Sea Coover ones, like they found cool places to, to, to hold fights and like interesting locations. And I mean, aside from, you know, usually they run around a corner and then they're in a train, like some sort of train yard or something to have to fight. Uh, I don't think I, for the most part, was like questioning, like, what's the geography? Where are we? Why are characters here? Like, there's just, so, I'm bombarded with questions watching this. Uh, and it's very hard for me to turn off my like critical brain. Uh, bombarded. Yes, that's it's, true. It's, you know, um, just because I, I, I asked myself, like, what, why are the characters saying this? Why are they doing it this way? I'm like, is there a better way to do this? I, I, I don't know. Uh, so sorry for everybody uh, who had to listen to me uh, rant and rave. Uh, but I give it a one. Uh, so make sure to join us uh, for our next episode, which is episode five. So shall ye reap is the name of that one. So shall ye reap. That's that's a title. It's a name, an, right? For this show, huh? I, Maybe I, it'll be. I want to see. I want to see that. I so can't shall wait. ye reap. I'm like, so okay. shall ye reap, right? Yeah, let me add it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see what that's all about next uh, next episode. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. We've been your rewatchers. Uh, make sure if you have any comments or whatever, you send them to our email address at highlanderrewatch at gmail.com. Uh, uh, which, also, is, which is uh, Phoebe at highlanderrewatch.com. Uh, uh, and also, <laughs> my God. Um, anyway, uh, hope everyone enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for listening. We've been your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This Kyle's is Kyle. Kyle. That's Kyle. There Bye -bye. he is. You can do it. Bye.